Hello, Dean, KK4DAS here. Today we're doing a bonus video for the Solder Smoke Challenge video series. This one is about how to use an oscilloscope to uh, measure the various boards of your uh, Solder Smoke Challenge direct conversion receiver. We have a lot of uh, new builders and people who are using their oscilloscopes for the first time. Now, I am not an oscilloscope expert. For expertise on using your oscilloscope, check out Alan Wolke, W2AEW's great video channel on YouTube. I'm just going to cover the basics here to get you started with what you need to know to measure your the various boards for your uh, direct conversion receiver. Now I'm using a Regal DS1202 scope. Uh, Siglin are very popular shows. Hanmatech and others are popular. They all have similar controls but they may be in different places. So I'm going to show you the basic settings to start with for measuring HF frequencies and audio frequencies and then we'll look at some tests of individual boards. So right now I just have a signal generator generating a signal that I have the scope probe connected to. I want to show you the basic uh, settings that you need to make sure you can actually see a sine wave trace of uh, uh, HF uh, signal. Start with the fact that we're on channel one of the scope. Channel one of the scope we're using AC coupling. You can use AC or DC. We want to eliminate any DC from our signal so we want AC coupling. So make sure you use AC coupling. Bandwidth limit 20 megahertz. Now, what that does is that limits the overall bandwidth. You say, well, I have a 200 megahertz scope. Why do I want to limit it to 20 megahertz? Well, you may see when I turn it off, there's a little bit of flickering here. That's high frequency noise. So if you turn on the 20 megahertz bandwidth, it's going to basically eliminate the noise. And at 7 megahertz, I don't care if I only have a 20 megahertz bandwidth. It's perfectly fine for our testing. Your probe needs to be set for a 10x probe. Now you'll see you can, with the regular, you can set it for 10x or 1x. If you're using a regular oscilloscope probe, you need to set it for uh, 10x. Now look, when I set it to 1x, the trace didn't change, but look here, the volts per uh, peak to peak went to 96 millivolts, but when I set it for 10x, it's right there at 980. So you want to make sure you have it at the right setting. Now, another thing to be aware of with the uh, Rigol and Siglent uh, uh, probes and others is there is also a slide switch. Difficult to see and difficult to get wrong. It needs to be in the 10x position when you are um, when you're using your scope or if you're using the probes from Rigol. Now, I have purchased some Tektronix scopes because I like them better off of eBay. Uh, but uh, if you're using the scopes that came with your oscilloscope, the probes that came with your oscilloscope, make sure you have them on 10x. Um, those are the key settings. Now, if you want to measure HF, high frequency, you need to uh, set your um, time base, you know, the, the, the essentially the horizontal uh, scale, to the right level so that you can see it. Now, I'm putting in a 7 megahertz signal, and so anywhere from 50, 100, you can see what happens. But if you start with 100 nanoseconds, that'll give you a good looking sine wave. If you want to see fewer um, uh, cycles, you can set it to 50 nanoseconds or even, you know, 20 nanoseconds, but you're in the nanosecond range. Okay. The other setting is your vertical setting, and that is the how many uh, volts per division or millivolts per decision. In this case, I have it set for 500 millivolts per division. So I'm seeing about a one volt peak to peak signal. And you can see I've got the measurement turned on for 960 millivolts. I can change the vertical and then at 200 millivolts, I'm still getting the same amount of signal. It just looks bigger on the scope. So that's what you use the vertical setting for. So that's for measuring uh, HF. Now, for measuring audio, I'm going to go ahead and change the frequency counter, so a frequency generator, so that I'm generating now a 1 kilohertz tone. So I'm turning down 610 now. That just looks like noise, right? That's a 1 kilohertz audio tone. Same, same um, uh, uh, amplitude signal, but I can't see it at all. Well, why not? Well, because 
For audio, my time base of 100 nanoseconds is way too short. So I need to, I need to uh, adjust the time base so that I can see the audio signal. And now I'm at a one millisecond time base, one millisecond time base. Same thing as before. So uh, we need to make sure that we're at the right time base so that we can see the signal we're looking at. Okay? And again, you can move up and down, up and down. I'm not going to cover triggering modes and all the other things. Just leave those on their automatic, uh, on their autom automatic mode. A couple other things. Don't use the auto button on your scope. Learn to use the basic settings that I just showed you so that you can understand what you're seeing and, and, and uh, why, you're, why you're seeing it. The auto is a shortcut and it may change some of these settings here in a way that you don't want. For instance, it'll probably turn on DC coupling, which, um, which, which we don't want. All right, I'm gonna go back to HF for a second and I wanna talk about the frequency counter. By the way, that's what an HF frequency looks like on your scope when you're set for the one millisecond uh, uh, time uh, 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 division because uh, there's just way too many uh, divisions in order for you to um, see the individual wave. So there we are back at our 50 nanosecond uh, time domain. Now, the Rigel oscilloscope can show you the frequency on this measurement line here and it's showing that it's bouncing all around 6.9704. That is a software defined frequency counter and it's only good for getting you in the ballpark. It's not good for accuracy and it's not good for stability because it's recalculating based on the averaging of your scope. Up here in the right hand corner is the hardware based frequency counter and you can see that is not moving at all. Now, the way you turn that on on the Rigel scope is uh, you use the measurement function and the second one down here is counter and you can have it on either channel one, channel two or off. So we'll just leave it on channel one. And that is how you turn on the hardware frequency counter. And that is the one you should be looking at for frequency stability, not this one on the, on the measurement line. All right, so those are the basics for setting up your oscilloscope uh, to measure HF, and audio frequencies, and now we'll take a look at a couple of the boards and see what things look like. Now first let's look at measuring just the oscillator without the filter. So that's the Q1, 2, and 3904. To do that on a completed board, I'm going to lift the gate lead off of the, um, the FET, that's our buffer, and I'm going to measure right at this junction of the 100K resistor of R5 and C4. That's where I'm going to put my measuring point. So I will lift that gate up so it's not connected. I'll put my uh, uh, probe right there and we'll take a look at it. And that's how it's set up. I haven't changed the settings at all from my uh, HF settings that I showed just a minute ago. And you'll see I'm getting about 2.8 <coughs> volts peak to peak on that signal. And that shows me that our uh, PTO uh, oscillator is working. I can see that I've got a frequency of about 7.16. If I want to see the frequency change, I can, you know, tune. Now I'm up at 724. And you'll see as you get a little higher, the, the, the amplitude may go up and down a little bit. But the PTO is working. It's tuning. The frequency is changing. I'm in the right range. I'm happy that the oscillator is working. The next thing we want to measure is the output of the actual PTO itself. And to do that, you want to make sure it's disconnected from the next stage, disconnected from the mixer, and you want to put a 50 ohm resistor to ground right here at the output of C6, right there. You want to put a 50 ohm resistor, and we're going to measure right there, disconnected from the, from the mixer and right at the output. And so I've set that up. There's my 50 ohm resistor. This is lifted. We're not, we're not connected to the Rex. And there you see we've got about 1.6 volts peak to peak. So if you're anywhere in the range of 1.5 to 2 volts peak to peak with a pretty nice looking sine wave, you're in good shape. And this is plenty of signal to drive that next stage of the mixer. Now, to test the mixer, what we're going to do is we're going to reconnect this and then we're going to take the 50 ohm resistor out 
and we're going to measure essentially at the same point in the circuit, right at the yellow output at the input to the mixer, and you'll be able to see what the difference in the wave looks like when the mixer is connected, because what we're looking for is to see that the diodes, all four diodes are switching. So now I have taken out the 50 ohm resistor, I've uh, put the, uh, reconnected the output of the PTO to the mixer, and I'm measuring right at the LO input to the mixer. And what you'll see now is you've got a nicely squared off wave, and you can adjust the settings a little bit to see it in different, uh, you know, different sizes and kind of ex examine what it looks like. But what you're expecting is a squared off wave at the top and the bottom, and what that's saying is as the PTO is cycling, that it is switching the diode, two of the diodes on and two of the diodes off uh, every cycle. And the squared off wave tells you that the thing is working that way. You know, it may look a little different. You may get some more ringing at the top or the bottom, depending on your scope, your settings, the amount of noise in the receiver, whether you have the, the uh, bandwidth limit on. So there's with the bandwidth limit off, you're seeing a lot of ringing. If you turn the bandwidth limit back on, that high frequency ringing goes away and you're seeing a, you're seeing a, uh, uh, a cleaner square wave. So most of the ones we're looking at look like that. I think that's where Bill has his scope set. I have mine set like that, but notice the difference between having the 20 megahertz bandwidth on and off. So you're looking for that squared off wave and that tells you that your mixer is mixing. So that's it for uh, this bonus edition of the Solder Smoke Challenge uh, video series uh, using your oscilloscope uh, to measure the frequency. I hope this is helpful. If you're measuring audio, remember to use your audio settings. You can just, if you, to just test the audio amplifier, if you can put in a one kilohertz tone into just the audio amplifier, you should be able to measure it right at the output. Um, if you don't, you know, if you put a, like a 10 ohm resistor at the output to simulate the speaker, you can measure the output right there and it'll be very similar to what the speaker would be seeing. So that's it for today. This is Dean, KK4DAS, saying 7-3.